First off, let's look at the differences between uh, PR and marketing. So we know that marketing is all about selling stuff. It's concerned with the bottom line. And the bottom line is that thing in the county that says how much money you have or don't have. It's concerned with selling stuff through pricing, distribution, promotion, things like that. It's a very quantitative field. Has anybody taken a marketing class? How, describe your experience, please. Um, actually, it wasn't that bad of a class. It was just um, different because my teacher would be kick off some music. Oh, they're from out of town? Yeah. Well, out of the country. Out of the country? Okay. Oh, cool. Amber, did you say you took one? I'm taking one right now. What's it like? It's lining up with this class. Like, it's lining up with this class? Yeah, you're just ahead faster than she is. She's postponed a lot of her lectures, but like SWAT and all those other things, like the oh, basic good. principles. I wish that that were, is that your minor? Yes. Okay, awesome, awesome. I wish that that were required. And when, when I was an undergrad, part of my program at Texas Tech, it was required to actually take a couple marketing classes. So if you can take a marketing class, do it. <coughs> all right. So we know marketing is about selling stuff. Advertising is all about cooking up a clever little thing and then paying money to put it somewhere, paying somebody to run it for you in a newspaper or on a billboard. You guys seen the Lumberjacks Make Great Journalists campaign? Mm -hmm. Well, what are some of the ones you guys have seen? Lumberjacks Make Great Journalists. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Wait, what else? Biologists? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait, what else? Mm -hmm. Teachers. Teachers, what else? Nurses. Okay. So, yeah, what they've done, they've paid somebody. They've paid somebody to put that billboard up, and that is what advertising is about, it's about message placement. And then we get into PR. Now, it's a little bit blurry on here, but uh, PR. Cytel tells us, and this is where I'm going to kind of break paths with Cytel. Cytel so says it's a marketing organization and using unbiased third-party endorsement to relay information about an organization. Now, we've, we've talked about that. I mean, we know that third-party coverage of an organization is going to be much more credible than, you know, if an organization is tooting its own horn. For example, like, just la I was up late last night, between this extra credit thing um, and another student, I was up late last night writing a letter for one of my former students. Um, so that she can get into uh, a certain graduate program. Because the graduate program wants voices other than the students because they're more credible. I mean, that's the principle right there is third party coverage is more credible. But this is, this is where I break a little bit from Cytel, is that I come at it from a relationships perspective. And so I would argue that public relations is also about building and maintaining relationships with different publics by knowing their needs, wants, interests, and, and trying to cater those and create mutually beneficial relationships and win-win situations. So that's the kind of difference we got going on. So then we get into integrated marketing communication and none of this stuff makes sense. Anymore. Well, it does make sense, but it's all subordinate to management. So let's take a look at this. Integrated marketing communication definitions. You can go on the internet and you'll see a thousand different definitions. They're all vaguely related, but they will vary. My favorite term for what is basically integrated marketing communications is marketing. There's a book by a guy named Rob Walker, and that book's title is Buying In, The Secret Dialogue Between What We Buy and Who We Are. And he talks about sort of like a, a resonance. It's like us you know, having our backgrounds and our experiences and our, our friends and people and things that, that make us us. In our minds, it creates a dialogue with consumer products, and so we, we tend to match consumer products up with who we are. That's, that's the theory. Now, to be able to sell people stuff in this day and age, Walker argues that people are using marketing. Somebody look up marketing real quick. I don't have a good definition of it. It's kind of murky. Does anybody have a phone or something? We can, yeah, a little bit of marketing. See if we can find a definition for marketing. Uh, 
says is an advertising advertising strategy that avoids direct sales of a product and focuses instead on bigger bakery such as marketing goods, brand identity, and publicity. So we've got publicity. You see, that there's a blur of things in there. You see that? We got what did you say? The brand identification, publicity, and marketing buzz. And what else? Marketing buzz. Marketing buzz. Things like that. You see, Red Bull. In the early days of Red Bull, they didn't even have commercials. There was none of this Red Bull gives you wings type stuff. Red Bull would just, and they wouldn't even always call the media. I think their first attempt at marketing was they got three of these kite boarders to kite board from Florida to Cuba. And one guy had the flu and said, no, I'm okay. And I think two of them almost died, actually. And none of them made it. They all had to, like, stop and be shipped back. Um, but that's not the story Red Bull told. Red Bull told a different, completely different story about these guys achieving success by kiteboarding to Cuba. And it's bizarre because it's not advertising. It's not public relations. It's just like, hey, let's go out and do this. Oh, yeah, we have this product over here, by the way. It's just, it, it breaks all knowledge or all, all, all of our assumptions of what advertising and marketing and PR actually are. So here's the, my favorite definition. This came off like a business side. IMC is an approach to achieving the objectives of a marketing campaign through a well-coordinated use of different promotional methods that are intended to reinforce each other. You guys remember the word synergy from the other day? One plus one equals three. So advertising plus public relations equals more than the sum of either on its own. So here's the world we live in right now. You guys have probably heard this term before, one of these, noise or clutter. What is noise or clutter? You guys heard this? Dr. Bonds, what is noise or clutter? Um, something or anything that blocks the message from being received. We can go with that, yeah? There was, you guys see Times Square? Okay, this thing is full of billboards and advertising and bright and flashing lights and all that stuff. And I saw a photo of it, right? And you know, you're kind of like overwhelmed by all the, uh, all the stuff going on. But then when you zoom in, there's a guy on his phone like this, walking around ignoring all that stuff. It's just such a perfect metaphor for noise and clutter. Um, I haven't watched local TV in a while. What's the problem with watching like local syndicated shows like Seinfeld or something? What happens? Any fans of furniture commercials? Or lawyers or used car commercials? That stuff just ruins television for me. I mean I can't even watch regular TV anymore because there's so much so many ads in it. Um, whenever you've got ads out there, if you're doing some kind of publicity strategies or some kind of publicity stunts or something, this can draw people's attention. And so whenever they subsequently, when they see your ads in different places, they tend to be more prone to pay attention to. Does that make sense? Have you guys ever like learned a word, like a new word? I learned a new word a couple of years ago. The word was bailiwick. You know what a bailiwick is? It's uh, like a jurisdiction or a, like an area of expertise or something like that. And I had never heard the word bailiwick ever in my life, ever at all. And then what happens? The next week, I heard it like three or four times. So publicity can work the same way to kind of help raise top of mind awareness. If you've got a stunt, people pay attention to it. It's going to be at the top of their mind, and they're going to pay more attention when they see your other ads or other other types of uh, propaganda. So it can be one of the most effective elements in the marketing mix for a lot of different types of marketing situations, such as introducing a new product, eliminating distribution problems with retailers by increasing demand. This is kind of what we saw like pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceutical companies started advertising about 10, 15 years ago. So people would see like, you know, these happy people taking 
Prozac or Lexapro or whatever on TV, and then go to their doctor and ask for it. So they're kind of bypassing the distribution problems and hitting the market directly so that the market demands that the distribution chain provide them with what they want. Publicity is great when you've got small budgets and a lot of competition because publicity can be very, very cheap. Publicity stunts. Um, and I don't mean just stunts by publicity. Publicity can also refer to, of course, third party coverage, like sending out a press release. I mean, it's cheap. I mean, it's like, how much does it cost? Who works with a pie log? Anybody do that pie log? You work for the pie log. How much does an ad cost? Like a half page, quarter page ad? I didn't find them hundreds. I didn't work in the ad. Hundreds of dollars. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of dollars. Okay. So on one hand, you get some publicity in the pine log, you can spend hundreds of dollars and have your ad placed. Or you can send them a press release about and tell them how it's important that they cover it or how it's important for their audience to read about it. That's free. That costs you however long it takes to write the press release. That's what I mean by publicity. You can do PR on the cheap. You may also use publicity to help explain a complicated product. Uh, an example is like feature pieces, features on the new iPhone and things like that. But my favorite, who all likes Whole Foods? Does anybody go there on Sunday morning and eat all their cheese? And there's what? There's no Whole Foods in Nacogdoches. No, there's not in Nacogdoches, but elsewhere. There's one in Houston, I assume. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I just got the one at Baton Rouge. Like, Sunday morning, I drop my wife off at church, and I take the kid, my daughter, and we go eat all their cheese and free samples and stuff like that. But they'd always have some guy out there with some kind of fancy, like, ninja blender or something like that doing these demonstrations and explaining how the product worked. What else we got? Um, we might use publicity to tie products to different things, like... Uh, mascots or something. Here's a question I ask all my classes. Now, you guys are too young to have actually watched Star Trek when it was on, but do we have any Trekkies in, in here? Anybody like Trek, Star Trek? Not necessarily Trekkies. I mean, that's kind of like weird. But Star Trek. Anybody like Star Trek? <coughs> no way. Not a single... Oh, I can't believe this. Oh, all right. What is our culture coming to? Okay. But now we've all seen Priceline commercials, right? With a Priceline negotiator, that's William Shatner. You guys do know he was the original Captain Kirk. So it makes me wonder if every time, I mean, I mean, I see Priceline every time I watch an old episode of Star Trek, and I see William Shatner. Priceline is in the back of my head. It makes you wonder. Yeah, something to think about. <coughs> Let's talk about third-party endorsement. I've talked about this several times over the semester, but I mean, this is a hardcore principle of PR, and we've gone over it many times. It's definitely going to be on the final, but here's what's going on. We live in, a, in an environment now, a media environment, where like traditional big media buys don't work as well as they used to. They did in the 70s and 80s. Things started changing in the 90s because we had a lot more channels of communication. Um, so what's going on? Third-party endorsement. I would say tacit or implicit support. When a third party was, I mean, this is the principle, I've said this many times. When somebody else talks about your product, it implicitly endorses it. Does that make sense? If the New York Times does an article on, I don't know, help me out, um, on the iPhone 5, or the 5 or 6 now? 6. Okay, New York Times does an article on the iPhone 6. Just by association, that implies an endorsement. Do we get that? Are we clear on that? This is probably the foundation of PR. Um, as a result, 
Some editors in different magazines and newspapers, I, I can't remember, I think USA Today may be among them, and I can't remember. They banned mentioning product names in news articles. And it starts getting into some kind of ethical issues, and sometimes newspapers don't want to be associated, or they want to sell advertising so they don't want to cover the new iPhone 6. Things like that. But bloggers are not under the same journalistic ethical guidelines. Is anybody a blogger? Who all has a blog? One, two, three, four. Is blogging a dying art or is it? It's different now. I guess. It's I don't know. A, I guess for people our age, because like some people consider blogging like writing about their life constantly, but like yeah. if anybody in this room's heard of the website Tumblr, like it's <laughs> it's kind of like a more social thing. Like you can be social on Tumblr, but you can also like blog about your life and like certain things happening like in the media. It just depends on like your style of blogging. Okay. So there's a different blogging is a gray zone. Yes. And it's not hard news. It's not what we learn in journalism classes. Actually, I did teach blogging in 205. But yeah. So what happens, a lot of bloggers will move in and they'll write all about products for free products. Does that make sense? They're not on staff. I mean, what do they have to lose? Not going to get fired. All right. So, as a result, as a result of this environment, we've got to come up with new strategies to be able to hit the bottom line. Integrated marketing communications is one of those things that is one of the like communication strategies that allows us to uh, you know, build synergy to make sure we sell enough stuff to stay in business. So let's talk about brand. Let's go to the theory real quick. Does anybody know what the law of primacy is? The law of primacy states this. What is learned first is learned best. What is learned first is learned best. That's, uh, that's critical for marketing, but this is also a, a theory from psychology and, and, and political science as well. Uh, the idea is that what we learn as children, we accept as truth, and then we pretty much spend the rest of our adult life trying to reinforce or rationalize that truth. Because we don't like to change our beliefs. When we start getting assaulted with conflicting information or information that conflicts with our existing beliefs, we end up with something called, we talked about this during the theories, does anybody remember it? We have two conflicting beliefs in our heads at the same time. Cognitive dissonance, you were paying attention. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so cognitive dissonance. But what we learn first, we learn best. And so with the brand, we're introducing a brand. We learn the most general characteristics for a brand. We want our brand to be memorable. We want people to remember our brand. That's pretty self-evident. But we've got to be aggressive, because remember, we're in this world of clutter and noise and all kinds of stuff, all kinds of advertising and publicity going on. So we've got to be very aggressive in building a brand. Um, we may use heritage or nostalgic value. You guys will notice this as you get into your probably late 20s or so. The music they will use in advertising will be the music that you were listening to when you were like 13, 14, 15 years old. It happens to everybody. It happens to everybody. So anything with heritage or nostalgic, nostalgic value, things that make you think back to your youth when you were learning things and they were all true, law of privacy. Brands also need a personality. So what do you guys think? What is the personality of Southwest Airlines? Anybody? They're, they're friendly, they're what? Yeah, they're, they're friendly, what else? I can say some hospitality, but... Uh, they're hospitable, Southern hospitality, I can go with that. They're very, they're playful. 
if you've ever been to like a, on a direct flight to Vegas from Southwest, you will find that the jokes kind of like go up in quality, things like that. They're funnier, they're uh, more adult oriented, I guess you could say. What about Mac? What is Mac's personality? Sophisticated. Sophisticated. What else? What's their big catchphrase? What's their big word? Hey, James. What is the personality of the Mac brand? The personality of the Mac brand? Yeah, it's the brand Mac. Cool Slob. Cool Slob, I like that. Uh, what else? Informative, efficient. Informative and efficient, okay, I'll go with that. Hit, yeah. young, mm -hmm. things like that. Back from the Mac and PC commercial. Yes, exactly. The Mac and PC commercial with Bill Gates look alike and Steve Jobs look alike. That's a good example. So young, hip, and innovative. Who owns a Mac person? Who likes Macs? All right, who's more of a PC person? I'm with you guys, man. PC. It's because of the law of privacy. I grew up with a PC. I believe a PC to be true. That's a joke, actually. That's a primacy joke. <laughs> so now you guys can go tell all your friends, say, yep, yeah, Dr. Madison told a law of primacy joke today. That's probably never happened in the history of history. What are some other brands that have a personality that you can readily identify? Think of a brand that has a personality to it. Nike. Nike. What is Nike's personality? Strong and it makes you want to work out. It makes you want to work out, okay. So would you say like inspiring perhaps? Okay. Cheetos. What is Cheetos' personality? It's like fun. You know, when you don't pitch a lot, just grown men eating Cheetos. They talk to audience, it's like, they manage, you know. You know what? <laughs> I just feel like grown men should eat Cheetos. Grown men should eat Cheetos. <laughs> Have you guys seen the ones in Doritos where the ladies like eating Doritos and then like scratches their butt or something and leaves a handprint? Alright, so would you guys agree? Brands have personalities. And we like people with personalities. People with no personality, we, we don't really notice. But people with strong personalities, we tend to notice them. And a lot of times they, they attract us. People with strong personalities attract us. And the brand ideally should have a personality that attracts the right kind of, kind of market, kind of consumers. So let's look at public relations advertising. This is related to image building. And it's all going to make sense when we look at the Dove commercial in a minute. But it's about using PR for advertising purposes. Again, this kind of falls into our marketing territory. We're using PR for advertising purposes rather than how it's been used traditionally. And it's good for like things like mergers and diversifications where we want to inform people of what's going on. There's a merger going on. And we want them to feel good about it. And at the same time, we want to increase our bottom line. Does that make sense? There's a lot of things going on when we want to do things like this. It's like personnel changes, advertising company services or capabilities. You see this garbage with financial services companies all the time. You guys seen that? In this? Oh, I feel safe with whatever financial service I'm watching an ad for. Charles Schwab and things like that. I don't know. In my opinion, is if you have money and you loan it to a bank. They owe you interest if they're going to loan your money out. I don't buy into the idea of having to pay to keep your money somewhere so they can use it to make money off of you and other people. Does that make sense? What do you guys think? Does make sense? Who else been nailed a bank fee? Maybe an overdraft or a... We've all been hit with an overdraft every now and then. And are these banks paying you interest to borrow money from you? Do banks loan you money interest free? Mm -hmm. I'm against banks, I guess. Well, that's my bank rant. I mean, these are the people that destroyed our country six years ago, financially. 
What else we got? Public relations, growth history. Remember, nostalgia. People like history. People like, uh, what's, what's Walmart's narrative? What is the narrative of Walmart? Starting in the beginning. Sam Walmart. Sam Walton? <coughs> yeah, Sam Walton. Okay, so Sam Walton. Tell us about Sam Walton. How to make Sam. In Walmart. Uh, and, and Sam's in Walmart. What else? What's, what's the narrative? Where the, 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 what's the warm narrative on that? All right, so Sam's got a dog. He loves his neighbors. He feels like they should have low prices. And so he sets up Walmart with a dream that average people should be able to afford nice things. Well, at least that's what's in their PR advertising. I mean, that's what we see. And, and, and old Roy, was it old, what's, what's the dog's name? Old Roy. And you guys are just kind of slow this morning. You're just not excited about Walmart as well. I've never heard of Walmart. Yeah. And what's the there? They have a dog food there. Like, yes, they have a lot of dog food there. Yeah, but they have a Walmart brand dog food. I think it's named Old Roy. I'm tempted to look this up right now, but I want to get to the dog commercial. All right, so the Walmart PR advertising narrative is, you know, humble country beginnings, caring about people, community, nice stuff and that you know I mean, if you'd rather have that image floating around about you than I don't know a company that pays people so little that they have to go on welfare and encourages people to go on public assistance to be able to keep working at Walmart um, let's take a look at the famous Dove commercial you guys who all have seen this thing well you guys get to see it again for those of you who haven't seen it this is a great example of public relations advertising. Integrated marketing communications. Oh, uh, don't tell me. Oh, no. Seriously? Here we go. For me, it's like the <laughs> building up to that. Some of the papers to do. And then the Yes, you're not. I always thought people were so cute when they have the little cheeks and they're like rosy, but mine are pretty plain. If I was going to change one feature about my face, I would say that I would want fuller lips. I was definitely a person that looks tired when I'm tired, and when people say that, I immediately like, oh man. I'm starting to already get little crow's feet and stuff, which like my mom has, so yeah. I'm a forensic artist. I was trained at the FBI Academy in 1993 in Camp Hospital. Worked for the San Jose Police Department as the police artist from 1995 to 2011. We didn't really know what we were doing, so that was nerve wracking for everyone. I showed up to a place I'd never been and walked into this big warehouse and at the very end there was a guy with his back to me with a drafting board. I had a curtain separating me so that I don't see him. Um, we'll begin. First of all, tell me about your hair. Uh, brown, long, I guess a little bit past my shoulders. Your jaw. My mom told me I had a big jaw. Yeah, the brown eyebrows, dark brown eyebrows. Um, I didn't know what he was doing, but then I could tell after several questions that he was drawing me. Tell me about your chin. I guess I haven't really compared it to anyone else's chin, but um, especially when like I smile, I just feel like it kind of protrudes a little bit. Hmm. What would be your most prominent feature? I kind of have a fat, rounder face. The older I've gotten, the more freckles I've gotten. You sort of realize, oh man, now I, I have to talk about myself and 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 think about my looks. I'm 40, so I'm starting to get a little bit of the crow's feet thing going on. Um, Once I get a sketch, I say thank you very much, and then they leave. I don't see them. I still didn't know. 
all I had been told before the sketch was to get friendly with this other woman, Chloe. Today I'm going to ask you some questions about a person you met earlier, and I'm going to ask you some general questions about their face. She was thin, so you could see her cheekbones. And her chin was a nice, thin chin. Mm. The women were really critical about moles or scars or things like that. And yet, they were describing just a normal, beautiful person. She had nice eyes. They lit up when she spoke and were very expressive. The length of the nose, what is that like? It's short. Short? Yeah, cute nose. Her face was fairly thin. She had blue eyes, very nice blue eyes. Okay. Broadcast. You notice all those like close-up face shots? You guys see that? What's that guy? What's that make you guys think? What's that? Uh... It just it draws you in. What? It draws you in. It draws you in. What else? Creates intimacy. Creates intimacy. Yes, very much. This is well crafted. So this is your self-described image, and then somebody else described you in light of this sketch. I have this whole thing about having dark circles and crow skin around my eyes and the was not part of the sketch at all that the stranger did. The stranger's was a little more like gentle. we apply for, how we treat our children, it impacts everything. It couldn't be more critical to your happiness. Our self-perceptions are generally kind of harsh and unbecoming when really that's not how the world sees us. Yeah. 
I think that care how you feel as long as you feel like buying some Dove soap. As long as you feel like saying Dove is a great company and they care about how I feel. Yes, ma'am. I feel like that you can to an extent, so you can punch it. I don't think that you can listen to your problems, but as long as you can feel a certain type of way that pushes you to like, Dove cares, I will buy your deodorant, then I think that's what you use. Because I wear Dove. But I don't really watch it. Just because it's good. I don't know. It's, uh, we can make an argument, too, that, I mean, this type of thing, I mean, it does. It makes us all feel good. We, it makes us have to dry our eyes after we watch it. And, I mean, we like feeling that. It's giving us something that, uh, that, that maybe, so, it, and maybe we feel better about ourselves as a result of seeing it. I don't know. But this was made to sell soap. Don't forget that. Um... Let's take a look at the Doritos Super Bowl ad. Just all I'm thinking about it. It's sort of a. Uh, I don't know. Let's see if we can find like a string of them. Uh, Doritos, this is kind of an integrated marketing communication thing, but it's, it's a little bit more complex. What Doritos has done the past few years is they've gotten other people to make ads for them. And then they get people to vote on them. And they pick the like top five ads and then they air them during the Super Bowl and they give like a million bucks to the people who made the ads. Are you guys familiar with, the, with this campaign? Let's see, let's uh, scratch the... It's a trend. This might be it. I don't know. It's like tablets that come with a keyboard that you can hook into like a little... I haven't seen this. I don't know if this is. Let's see what they got for us. Submit 
entries for the Doritos crash the Super Bowl thing. Let's think theoretically. Let's go back to theories. What was the question? What do you think these people are doing? These people submit something to this Doritos crash the Super Bowl contest. They're thinking about the product. They're thinking buying, about the product. Buying this bag. They're probably buying it, and it might be. What else are they doing? They're probably telling their friends about it. The two-step flow thing, yeah. So Doritos has got a lot of mileage out of this uh, uh, crash the Super Bowl thing. Um, let's look at traditional integrated marketing. Now, traditional integrated marketing includes things like article reprints. This is like this is what's going on, on Facebook. I, um, you guys know Jordan Moss? You know Jordan Moss? Uh, Jordan Moss and I co-authored the paper and took it to the conference, and it got some coverage in that MassCom 440, what's that, my SFA, Y-O-U, you guys know what I'm talking about? No SFA, idea? Yeah. What is it? It's on the my SFA. Yeah, SFA, you, or something? Yeah. Okay, all right, so what do I do? I got to take that, I repost it on Facebook. Now in the old days, people would get New York Times articles published about it, and they'd print it in all their journals and brochures, and they, they'd reprint articles. We got Facebook to take care of that. Um, what else, trade show? Has anybody been to a trade show? Oh, it's going on today actually. Hold on a second. I want you guys, if you have time, to go to. This is not exactly a trade show, but I think it's going on today. I think what is happening is SFA, it's like a vendor fair. You guys familiar with this? No. SFA vendor fair, October 30th. Yes, it is today. Awesome. Um, you can meet representatives. Uh, what happens is these people show up with all their office products and other things, and they try to get people who buy stuff for SFA to buy their stuff. Um, if you're selling like pens, if you're selling, I don't know, what do we use here at SFA? Paper, stuff like that. There will be paper vendors there, and they will be trying to get administrative assistants all over the campus to buy their stuff. So if you guys can make it to that, go to that. Let's figure out where it is. The Grand Ballroom. Grand Ballroom. <coughs> Anybody planning on going that? Did you guys hear about this? No. I usually that's how it works. I think it is a college type thing. You have to register for it. Oh, and register and please identify classes you may want to attend. Oh. Registration not required. Hmm. All right. So after this class. After this class, we're taking care of the extra credit. But those of you who are not doing extra credit, go to this thing. Hold on, what's the, what's what? the extra credit? I got the um, thing on D2L, but you didn't say what it was. Um, read it on D2L again or come by my office. Let's, I want to continue with integrate. I want to get through integrated and marketing communication. But um, I'll explain it more. If you guys want extra credit, come by my office. We'll do it. We're going to sign it on an individual basis. Okay. Let's get back to integrated marketing. Communication. How do I go from the continue from this slide? There we go. All right. So what else? Again, the traditional integrated marketing what means spokespeople. I mean, we see lots of spokespeople. Who are some spokespeople out there that you guys have seen? People that are like famous for something and then they start. Selling stuff. The guy from Sidetrack for Progressive. Uh, Priceline. For Priceline, yes. Uh, Rock on, man. Who is that? George Foreman. Not me. Who is it? George Foreman, yeah, he's one. George Foreman. Yeah, he sells grills now. Wait, is he still alive? Yes. Okay. George Foreman. Um, the OxyClean guy? OxyClean, OxyClean. 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 who is he famous for? Oxy <laughs> oh, but he's still a spokesperson. Okay, yeah, yeah. She's famous for a lot, but she's a terrible singer. Probably. People that, yeah, people that talk about these things. So. Spokespeople can be a very valuable, I mean, there's, there's some credibility. Yeah. Oh, here's the spokesperson. Now, so you, you probably wouldn't want to get I don't know. 
Let's see. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't want to get Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> for, you know, as well as person. Careful with those people. Make sure they not have a tainted history. But you guys have seen Charlie Sheen, though, right? Dennis Rodman. Wait, so he's accused of rape or something, right? He used to spell Percy for Converse when he first came out, but because he started with crap. Oh, dyed hair? Yeah, like hair, and it wasn't kids wearing Converse, so they lost money on him. Okay. Um, what is it that, what's cars Charlie Sheen selling these days? You guys remember Charlie Sheen's cocaine meltdown a few years ago, right? <laughs> Tiger Wizard Blood? He videotaped himself freaking out. <laughs> They got him back, and he's now selling like a sports car aimed at like single men with money. I can't remember what kind of sports car it is, but he's done well for himself. Here's some more traditional integrated marketing things. There's cause-related related marketing, which is trying to tie your PR to some kind of philanthropic thing. For example, oh, I'm out of examples. Somebody help me out here. To do what was it? To uh, tie yourself with philanthropy. No, oh, well, we've got the honeybees. You guys familiar with the honeybees thing? Yeah. So honeybees, Hagen Dogs went out, they found the cause. They found out honeybees are dying in record numbers. And so they attached themselves to that cause, and so they put in their mind the image that they're trying to save the honeybees. And to their credit, they did give a lot of money to research and things like that, but they had a particularly intricate PR campaign, which we will study in case studies when you guys get to it. Um, In-kind promotions, bartering for publicity. Upstairs, we've got, I don't know, 100 Taylor Swift t-shirts. I think these were sent to the, uh, the radio station, which is not a Taylor Swift format, is it? Taylor Swift is not, that's just something different. So I guess the idea is that they give us free stuff and we give it out. So they get publicity and we do the work for them. We see a lot of that in like social media and like sharing and things like that. Um, when are y'all giving out the t-shirt? I don't know, you'll have to go upstairs and ask them. Um, my daughter got one, it's too big for her, but this was maybe six months ago. But I'm sure they've got tons left, they had tons and tons and tons. Um, when you guys are new students or any time like a chamber of commerce person comes and talks to you, they usually bring things like chamber of commerce pens and t-shirts and stuff like that or, or, or koozies, things like that. You see this going on at tailgate parties. Who went to homecoming or the tailgate party? How many booths were out there giving away like free stuff? A lot of them. Well, actually, that's kind of just general publicity. Like, they're giving that free stuff to other people to give. That's kind of an in-kind promotion. Oh, here's my story. I used to play in punk rock bands in my misspent youth. And I was selling advertising for a town or country station. And we rented practice space from a guy named Diego. I don't know what his first name was. He had Diego's Burritos. He had like four or five of them. And so I went to him. I said, Mr. Diego, I work for KYZZ, Tejano Country. Can, I, can we make that work a deal out where we exchange advertising, radio advertising, for practice space? Because as a salesperson, I could get the, the air time much cheaper than other people. He said no. But that was my futile attempt and sort of a in-kind type of thing. What else is this? Provide specialty advertising. Yeah, specialty advertising. By that, I mean anything with somebody's logo on it, like his driving jack shirt, especially advertising. What other logos you guys have on stuff? You guys have any logos on stuff? That thing, what is that? Patriots? That's specialty advertising. Is that what it is? These are things, koozies, all that, that type of stuff. All right. Now today, 21st century, We've got some more, we've got some uh, different, okay, we've got a little bit different methods of going about doing things. Um, social media marketing, it was 2.5 billion annually, it's probably up around three. Uh, I haven't changed the PowerPoint since last spring. That's the fastest growing category of integrated marketing communication type things. We're also seeing television brand integration. 
Now, this is something new. We'll watch a product placement video in a minute. Well, product placement, product placement's old school. Brand integration is new school. Have you guys seen, what is it, Sam I Am? What's the Sean Penn movie where he's like mentally handicapped? I am, I am Sam. Have you guys seen that? What's the big brand in that? What brand bought that movie? It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Where did the guy work? Starbucks. Where's the Starbucks? In every single scene, see that this is brand integration. Starbucks plays an integral part in the story. We're seeing this more and more. Anybody watch Stargate SG One? Air Force, exactly. Thank you for being my other nerd. Nobody else owns up to watching Star Trek, so. Thank you, James. I appreciate it. Yeah, Stargate SG-1, that is pure Air Force. The Air Force has an office, I did a paper on this. Air Force has an office in uh, Hollywood, and people come to them saying, well, we want to borrow an airplane, we want to borrow some uniforms, or we want to borrow like some shooting locations, we want to borrow stuff. And the Air Force says, yeah, we got all that stuff. But hey, hey, let's take a look at your script real quick. And so the Air Force will take a look at the script, make sure it's portrayed in a positive light, and they will give out stuff in exchange for a positive portrayal. So that is how Stargate SG-1 came to be, was through product and her brand integration, the brand being the United States Air Force. So is that like in the new Fury movie coming out? I, I don't know. What is it? The new war movie, Harry. War movie, okay. It's got a tank. And it's a real tank. Okay. Is it the same kind of thing? Like, um, by using it? The Army has an office there, too. Marines, all the armed forces have office. So, yes, it probably is. There's probably some degree of brand integration going on there. You're probably right about that. I haven't seen the commercials, so I don't know what's okay. going on. Yeah, anytime there's like vehicles flying owned by the Air Force, the Air Force got a crack at that script. And that script is reflecting something that the Air Force wanted to portray. Now, product placement is older. This has been going on since the beginning of TV. I want to clarify this. Brand integration is a newer form of doing these things. Probably the past, I don't know, we saw it in like once or twice in the 80s and 90s but it's become more common in the past decade. Brand integration, keep that in mind. Now we're gonna talk about product placement. Now let's see what we've got. We got some videos on product placement. Some of this may be before your time. Some of it may not. <laughs> See how many brands you can spot.
I love the power of love. It's so bad. <laughs> To be or not to be, that is the question. And there's the respect that makes calamity of so long a life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? Proud moments come to me. Was it a soft little guy anyway? Then I say his wife, I'm not even sure I did. And my reward is dinner and dancing at Taco Bell. And he said, I like vegetables. Come on. You're telling us, Claudia, facetious, but you do not realize that Taco Bell is the only restaurant to buy the franchise one. So? So? Now all restaurants are Taco Bell. Dinner and dancing at Pizza Hut? I mean, yeah. I like a big fat piece of pizza, come on. You tell Miss Quasi to see his but you do not realize that Pizza Hut was the only restaurant to survive the franchise. Play music. Let me die playing music. Don't touch me. Welcome to the target team. You're locking me in? Move. 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 Move.
actually like Sean T's all of his instruments. Like they're very inspirational to me, not working out. Wait, what's he, what does he sell? Workout videos. Workout videos, okay. I like I actually that. bought one, actually. Oh, you actually bought one? What is this thing? Um, his is like really, like the one I bought is hip hop abs. He does insanity. And he does insanity. 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 It's an insane workout plan. Insane workout plan, okay. <laughs> wait, wait I'm, this is Ring a Bell. I haven't seen this guy. Oh, yeah. 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 Insane workout. Yeah, he's a crazy dude that does crazy things. I like all these little commercials that deal with food. Yeah, the bullet. No, the food, not the ninja. Like the ninja one. Actually, I saw the original Mads. It was just so slow. Yeah, there was like this bearded lady talking about kids who come by and like throw sticks at her and stuff like that. But then she got mad and they stopped doing it. It was awful. It was awesome. Um, we got buzz marketing. This refers to word of mouth. I like the way Sytel puts it. He says, call evangelists or ask to spread the gospel. Mm -hmm. and how about this? Why don't we put out some more down the mouth on the street right now? If you guys know any disgruntled accounting majors, they're thinking, oh, I'm going to change the marketing. They're not good at math. Tell them to come see me. In public relations, we have a, less of a math requirement than marketing. And so I'm hoping to create some buzz marketing for our program with that. Um, what, what theory, are we, we talked about this theory already today, what theory applies to plus marketing? Oh, thank you. Does anybody use the app Clout? This is, uh, talks, it, this is, this is kind of like measures people's own buzz. And it did like last year, I don't know if it's even still in existence, some of these things are flashing the pen. Um, Let's see, all right, last slide before we take off. Can anybody name any uh, product placement in songs? Well, a lot of rappers do that. Yep, rappers and country music. It turns out country music is like more, has more product placement than rap music. It has more violence. They have after home. Jack Daniels. Rappers, they use product place like Expensive things they probably really can't afford, like Chanel, oh, uh, I woke up in a Bugatti, probably woke up like a Honda. <laughs> 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 All right. Yes, man, Lucy. The song One Headlight on the Geico um, Motorcycle Commercials. I remember that song. They have that's their new song on the commercials. Wait, what's the? The one and white is on the Geico motorcycles commercials. Okay, so the Geico is recycling the song? Okay. 